Today we are starting off with a deep dive into one of nature's most magical places, Grotto Azzurra or Blue Grotto in Capri, Italy. During the reign of Roman King Tiberius, the grotto was a marine temple to the gods and as time passed, local legends of spirits and demons stopped people from visiting until a fisherman and author ventured inside in 1826. And now it's a must-see. The bright azure of the water is because the sunlight that enters from right under the cave's mouth. This is Kaleidoscope. Welcome and we bring you positive, daring, different. Getting untangled from the poverty net, helping mobility meet climate change and unleashing our inner geek at Lanka Comic Con, all on the show today. Kaleidoscope is on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. Remember to subscribe, follow and like us for more. To our fabulous partners on the show, Selico Live, CDB and The Daily Morning. Thank you. CDB Hybrid Leasing. Enjoy exclusive interest rate and much more for hybrids, plug-in hybrids and EV vehicles. Looking back at the week that was on CDB Snapshot. The IMF agrees to provide 700 million US dollars as a loan to Sri Lanka to address its 2025 budget deficit. The BOI signs an agreement for 9.3 million US dollars to develop a new hotel in Alla. Sri Lanka's trade deficit is at 604 million US dollars in July, up from last July's 367 million. Sri Lankan Paralympian Dulan Kodituaku wins silver in javelin while breaking his own previous world record. The travel industry is set to contribute a record 11 trillion US dollars to global GDP in 2024. NASA rocket scientists develop ocean robots to go where humans can't, in Antarctica, and understand how fast the ice is melting. Princess Martha Louis of Norway marries a shaman who proclaims to have risen from the dead. America's Joey Chestnut sets the world record in hot dog eating, scarfing down 83 in 10 minutes. You focus on your goals. We will take care of the risks. Silly go life. Welcome to Selinko Life News Capsule. Earlier this year, Code Red, Climate Risks and Opportunities for Sri Lankan Businesses, or better known as the Sri Lanka Climate Summit, happened for the first time. One of our more pressing concerns is our mobility sector. Vehicles on the road make up for more than 50% of our carbon emissions and we seem to be really missing something by not embracing electric vehicles more. Sharon Fernando, the co-chair of the Steering Committee on Climate Action at the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, joined us for a frank tete-a-tete. Sharan, you've been very involved with the Sri Lanka Climate Summit. Now, there were the mobility sessions. What were the key takeaways from that? Firstly, uh, Sri Lankan mobility needs to move from internal combustion engines, i.e. petrol or diesel, to electric. Because electric is more than 40% more efficient than internal combustion engines. That's the first take. The second is, we have to move from private transport solutions to public transport. So to do that, the government or the, the mixture of the government and the private sector need to invest on upgrading public transport. Again, it should be electric. Now, if those two things happen concurrently, that's the move to electric and the move from private to public, you will have a significant improvement in the level of congestion. Congestion is at the moment, ten, uh, because of congestion, our travel speed is 10 kilometers a liter. The average Sri Lankan person spends three hours a day traveling to work. Congestion will resolve. Pollution, 51% of our carbon emission is from road transport. That factor will resolve. We spend three to four billion dollars a year on fuel for road transport. So these three factors can resolve with this shift from uh, internal combustion engine to electric, concurrent shift from public to uh, private to public. It all sounds relatively easy, but what are the challenges in implementing this? The government has to lay down a policy and be consistent with that policy. 
For example, in 2014-15, there was a duty rebate on electric cars and I think 5,600 cars came in in a short period. 300 charging stations came up. But then the policy changed. We just need to make this policy and, and there's no logical reason why Sri Lanka can't say that from tomorrow only electric cars will be imported. We've had an import ban for three years. It is the perfect time to announce a shift in, in policy. How optimistic are you that everything will fall into place and we will have EV mass transportation mobility in this country? What do you think of a timeline? The timeline that I would work on is to get the policy uh, agreed on immediately. The time is now. Uh, the time is pre-elections when everyone is talking about manifestos and plans to to present this plan to everyone who is in the decision-making process and justify this plan. Because uh, I, I really am convinced that there is, there is no scientific or no, no empirical evidence why we shouldn't go down this road. It's only advantages and, and no real disadvantage. And now for a peek at the markets this week. At the Colombo Stock Exchange, the all-share price index continues to drop, with the market P.E. ratio dropping to 8.5 times earning. The news that the eight leading OPEC Plus producers are expected to start unbinding voluntary output curbs in October, leading to an oversupply of oil, has led to oil prices tumbling to one-year lows close to 73 US dollars per barrel. Gold prices are still close to historic highs of 2,500 US dollars per ounce, with a strong US dollar being the only deterrent to the precious metal moving up further. Oceanographers discovered an underwater mountain that's 3,109 meters tall, taller than Mount Olympus, teeming with bizarre and rare marine species, some of whom were filmed for the first time ever. If you love fashion that pushes limits, you love Amit Agrawal's mesmerizing couture collection at India Couture Week 2024. What exactly is poverty? Definitions differ, but the bottom line literally is when a person's basic needs cannot be met. Surprisingly, or maybe not, it is in the Colombo district that the poverty line was highest in January this year, but it dropped to 17,608 rupees in May per person per month, which means each person needs a little over 17,000 rupees to meet monthly expenses for basic needs. That is a threefold increase in a decade. During COVID and the economic crisis, the poverty line skyrocketed from 6,966 rupees in 2019 to 15,970 in January 2023. And that line continues to rise even though dipping somewhat in the recent months. So how do we get our people over that poverty line and whose responsibility is it? I checked in with the Head of Department of Economics at the University of Colombo and Senior Researcher at the Centre for Poverty Analysis, Professor Sirimala Abhiratna, for some answers to my questions. How do people fall into that poverty net? After the economic crisis and also before that the COVID pandemic, and there were two ways over how people fall into poverty. First one is the crisis impact. They affected, it affected various ways to the lives of people. Secondly, the immediate policy responses to the crisis and that has also affected because of the price adjustments and tax adjustments and with all these things. So the people, uh, about six, seven million people believe to have fallen below the poverty line now. What are the tangible symptoms of poverty and what is the fallout from that which can be seen very clearly? People try to deal with various uh, ways when they are faced with this kind of poverty because their income is not enough to buy the things that they used to buy earlier. So their consumption levels goes down and people actually 
uh, in severe levels we have witnessed the cutting down their meals, cutting down the nutrition items. Earlier they bought chicken or fish or dry fish or these kind of items. Now they have cut down them and they have reduced the portions. And so these are the various ways that people try to cope with the crisis. In addition to that, of course, borrowings and pawning jewellery and these kind of uh, issues we have seen quite widely uh, spread out throughout this country. Does Sri Lanka have extreme poverty? At the moment, I think we have extreme poverty means you, uh, you cannot meet your basic needs and I think uh, part of the population uh, belongs to this group and also then above that line, you know, poverty line is the minimum level of expenditure that a person needs to survive with the minimum calorie intake and then above that level also we have uh, vulnerable groups. So the government is placed fairly and squarely as the sole entity responsible for pulling people out of poverty. Is this realistic? Given the uh, budgetary constraints and also that is one of the major causes of our economic crisis. So while managing the fiscal consolidation, the government has to face the, the, this particular issue looking after the vulnerable people and the people who are in poverty. In fact, the World Bank uh, kind of these kind of organizations have supported that. That is also one of the conditions in the IS, IMF program that we need to look after the vulnerable groups and poor groups. So the government has no choice. Even with that, even with the fiscal constraint, government has to look after that. And in fact, uh, they have the government has adopted many programs at the moment. So each person needs 17,000 rupees a month to meet their basic needs. Now that's a significant ask given current income levels. Given the current context, is this going to get worse or better? That depends on how we act as a nation, as a government. So if we are actually uh, uh, emphasized, uh, we emphasizing our recovery program, economic progress program, and we have seen a couple of laws have been passed and acts have been in place right now. So these are actually uh, showing us the way that we should progress. So in this progress, we will see people coming out of poverty and otherwise um, it might can turn back to worse situations. So we're stepping into an election month. What are the impacts a change in government will have on this poverty line? This is the worst kind of uh, uh, impact upon this kind of program. In fact, you are faced with an election, everybody's attention is now turned towards elections and the candidates are uh, pulling the public attention towards them and forgetting all our basic needs and poverty problems, you know, all the economic crisis problems. Now, the continuation of the current program, recovery program, I said it is in two respects. One is the immediate response to establish the macroeconomic stability and debt sustainability. After achieving these two things, we need to ensure that the economy is progressing. And we haven't touched upon that particular aspect yet, which is very, very important. So for Sri Lanka, we hope that we will see the change and that sustainable change come. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It was all about geeks returning bigger, better and even more geekier. Trace Expert City was all agog just two weeks ago with Lanka Comic Con 2024 with geeks, gamers, over a hundred cosplayers and artists coming together to celebrate pop culture and the geekier side of things. One of our guests on Kaleidoscope, photographer Nazri Ahmed, was in the thick of things and shared these photographs of the best, the biggest, the noisiest, the geekiest and the smallest cosplays. This weekend, unleash your inner geek and have a great weekend. 
until we see you next week